In this angle, we're going to show you quite a few things. We're going to move to the tension side of the, uh, which is the idle side. We've got the idle shaft in here, and I want to explain it. I'm going to start up here at the top with the vertical hinge. Again, this hinge has a pin that goes down and it opens and closes, and the same thing that happened over there. If we open the hinge, adjust it open, the band is going to run forward toward the log. If we close the hinge, the band is going to run back toward the back toward the operator side or back toward the back of the guides. The uh, the hinge system then that we have that that tensions is a horizontal pin that goes this way, and I'll demonstrate this as as we uh, back off. Push this over a little. As I back off, you can see this thing drop down. And so you can see the flex that we have there. And inside of here is a spring and is a big large nut that, that jacks out against it with an acme thread, a three quarter inch acme thread rod. And when it tensions, when we compress the spring to a given point, and we have a measuring device up on the top, when we get there, we have the tension that we need on the blade and, that, and then it can float and give and take as that blade needs it. So this is an important part of maintaining the blade and sawing straight. Um, here you will see our, uh, our uh, measuring devices or our uh, scales we call them. It's magnetized. You can just take and change that anytime you want to. We have as standard, you can see at the top maybe, I don't know if it'll pick it up, the one inch scale. This is four quarter, this is five quarter, this is six quarter. We have a scale that is for made for cross ties. You can visually start it and, and it is all in the four quarter scale. Um, I don't have that with me here, but anyway, we've got that and all you do is just go from line to line and when you get to the last line, you'll be on nine or six or seven or eight, whichever it is, six, seven, eight, and nine are the figures that you use with saw and cross ties. But it's easy to see. Our pointer here is adjustable. It's adjustable up and down. And as you saw the magnetic scales, you can move them up and down also. So I like that because the line of sight is always the same. The pointer stays at the same height and it is the scale that moves up and down and it's easy to read, easy to see. Um, we tighten the belt from the engine to the drive shaft on the, on the driven side with a handle. And uh, this rod that comes out is easy to make your tension tighter. So as the belt stretches, you just adjust this rod out and you can easily make the belt tighter and then you can disengage it when necessary to start a cold start or whatever. Now the reason we do that, sometimes people say, well, why do you do that? But the reason is, is if we didn't have a way to tighten the belt on that side, then you'd be trying to jack the motor over. We have the pump over here and if you have to jack the motor, then you gotta jack the pump. And so it just causes a lot more complications. I like for the motor to set right where it's at, bolted down solid. I'll do my belt tensioning with this idler and uh, I've got an independent way then to tighten the, the pump. While I'm at the pump, you can see this is a two-stage pump and we have a two-stage pump on mills that have the debarker or the mud saw we call it. And, uh, and so it's separated. We can run the mud saw without uh, interfering with our forward motion at all. So that, that works good. Now with this system, we turn this pump slower than its high volume capacity. It's got a higher volume capacity than what we run it. We run it slow. We've learned that keeps the oil cool. Uh, we have a tank up there that has sufficient oil. It doesn't run hot and it does a very good job. Every movable function on this mill is done with hydraulics. And we like that because it's very durable and it holds up really well. Um, from this point, I'm going to pan over this way, and you can see our control. It's on a swing arm. It can be folded up to travel. It can swing out to the position you like it. I start from the right-hand side because my log loader is on the right-hand side. Now, by the way, we can mount this log loader on the other side also if a person wants it. There are small alterations we have to do, but we can do that. Anyway, I lift the log up. I put, put the log loader down. Uh, the squaring arms come up, the squaring arms go down. Those are real simple. You can learn that real quick. This is the log turner, and if I want to raise it up out of the bed, I push it to the right and it comes up. It just comes right up to the right. 
push it to the left, it goes down. If I want it to turn the log upward and spin the chain upward, I just push up. If I want the chain to push down, it will not turn the log down, but the chain will come down and scoot it in at the bottom. I just pull it down. Then I have my log tapers. I can go one at the time up, or I can put both of them down at the same time. I always like to put these down before turning a log, just because turning a log is a hard slamming uh, weight. Then we have the dog clamps. I can push it up, they come up out of the bed, push it across and they clamp, push it back that way and they unclamp. <coughs> Everything is, uh, is, is set up in a fashion that it's easy to understand, easy to run. Anybody can walk up these controls and be running them in a short period of time. We have, drop down below, we have a throttle switch that you throttle that up. You may have heard the solenoid kick on. And, and it'll rev it up and you hit that and it, and it goes down. If I want to kill it, I can hit the switch and it'll kill the engine if I need to do an emergency kill. Here is the hand control box. <clears throat> we first have power that comes into the box, 12 volt power on a, on a mill that is a diesel mill, but if we have a, a, a electric mill, then it would be 100, 120 volts. We come to the fuse, we come to a power switch. I can stop all the power to all this control box or I can turn it back on. This is the fast and the slow speed for the up and down. I flip a switch and my up and down is fast. I flip it and it's slow. My slow and fast speed are controllable with a needle valve so I can set them however it makes, uh, you know, however it works best for me. Here is my forward switch. Makes the head go forward. I turn that off and hit reverse and it comes back. Um, this is my up, that is my down button. This is my guide out, this is my guide in. And of course this is my computer, this one is, is equipped with the computer. Uh, I turn my computer on and this is the computer set switch that I press and it, and it does its function. This is the debarker, I push it in and it goes in and turns on at the same time and rides the log. And when I get to the end of the log, I, I bring it out and it comes back out and that switch can stay over to the right or it can be in a neutral position either way. It doesn't matter. But this is easily handheld. We have a, a place for it to set here and then we have another place on the end of the mill. We have a, a cord that, that makes this thing easy. I can walk up here with it in my hand and, and make sure everything's going. If something happens I don't want, I can stop it. I can back it up, move the, move the blade up and down, and I can do all that. I can get in here and sight it from here, and, uh, and I can see what I'm doing. I like to be able to walk around with this control. Now to the speed of the head forward. Uh, if we can pan down, we have a flow control valve. We extend this lever because it gives us a little more control. The further I go forward, the faster it goes. The return is always full speed ahead, but the forward speed is what is controlled. If I go all the way back with it, then it will stop the forward movement completely. This, this is just, it's a flow divider, so any of the flow is divided back to tank without heating the oil. We have a needle valve on that's set. You can set this for the maximum speed. A lot of times people have a Sawyer they hire and they want to set this for a maximum speed in the Sawyer. They don't want him to exceed that, so they can set that. If he goes all the way forward, it won't exceed the maximum speed set by the needle valve. 